On January 6, 2015, a group of strangers got on a bus before sunrise headed to Washington, D.C. It was the first day of 114th Congress. We were 20 New York and New Jersey residents, including students in high school through graduate school. Even though we were not experts in government issues, once on Capitol Hill, our passion alone transformed us into grassroots activists. First stop, Rayburn House Office Building. First, we visited the office of Congressman Peter Roskam of Illinois. Due to the inclement weather, our group split into two to meet the congressman and his chief of staff separately and delivered our policy priorities. Then we moved on to the office of Congressman Elijah Cummings of Maryland. Since no one in our party was from the Baltimore County area that the congressman represents, we felt a bit more nervous. What little contact Korean Americans and the congressman had had so far made this visit more intimidating. But thankfully, the staff seemed to be rather impressed by the size of our group. We began our meeting by introducing who we are, what CASE does, and how many Korean American constituents reside in the congressman's district. Uh, has about 7,000 Korean American voters. And uh, these are the policy priorities we have. We feel important for Korean American community. Uh, we then discussed the policy priorities for Korean Americans during this Congress and addressed why the Congressman should support these issues. Uh, in the previous session, uh, unfortunately, Congressman Cummings did not support the bill. This government uh, so far hasn't really taken an active stance on providing compensation or apologies for the comfort women victims who are who have still survived to this day. And the sad thing is that they are also passing away. So, Overall, yeah. our priority issues are comprehensive immigration reform, partner with Korea Act, strong alliance between the U.S. and Korea, humanitarian family reunion between citizens of the U.S. and North Korea, and the status of trilateral alliance among the United States, South Korea, and Japan that is lately being threatened by the Japanese right-wing's ultra-nationalist movement. Fashion, sure. probably. And, yeah. Most of the Korean uh, people who is living in uh, your district, mm -hmm. uh, they are uh, two uh, immigrants from for long times ago. Mm -hmm. So most of they they are the, uh, document people, sure. uh, especially. Thank you. Thank you. On the way to our next stop, we luckily ran into Congressman Gerald Conley, who represents Fairfax County area of Northern Virginia. He is also a longtime co-chair of Congressional Caucus on Korea. He appreciated our reaching out to him and warmly expressed his hopes to grow closer to the Korean American community. When on the Hill, we could not miss Congressman Bill Pasquale of New Jersey's 9th District, which encompasses many towns with large Korean-American population. Even in his 10th Congress, Congressman Pasquale was energetic and excited as ever and welcomed us with a big smile. My door is always open. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the, the same. Office. The duties of the office of Congress of the United States of America. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Members of the Korean community, Whoa. I love <laughs> yeah. we took a liking to each other very, very early on. And, and they must be saying, we can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> and I want you to know I never want to get rid of you. So thank you for all that you've done for me. Congressman Mike Honda represents San Jose and its surrounding region in California. Of many words to describe him, the best one is without a doubt, compassion. Once he learned of the sex slaves of World War II, otherwise known as the Comfort Women Victims, Congressman Honda spearheaded the effort to formally recognize the issue in Congress and passed the House Resolution 121 in the year 2007. 
But just because such a meaningful milestone has been reached, it doesn't mean that we can stop being active. As a community, we Korean Americans still face ahead of us a long and winding journey to social advancement in our country. During our two-day visit, we engaged with a total of 22 congressmen and congresswomen. In the future visits, we hope to make strides on the Hill with many more Korean American grassroots activists and work together for the future of our community. Far too often, many forget that we Korean Americans are Americans too and treat us as less than who we are. But as we experienced at the Capitol, the issues and voices of our community do not get attention on their own unless we work to bring them up and address their importance, or rather, our importance. Join us in a mission larger than any one of us.